This very well might go down as one of the best MCS games of all time. Maybe the best MCS game of all time. Not only due to the matchup, the fact that both of these players are some of the most accomplished Madden players in history, but also because of the fact that they were able to play this in person. There was a lot of chatter back and forth between the players, and the fans even got into it as well. We're going to be breaking down John Beast versus Wesley. I feel like this is the number one game uh, of yesterday's Madden Bowl kind of kickoff to the event. I actually really like the uh the way they did the madden bowl this year i think it's kind of cool it's really a climactic thing question of the day for you guys if is basically is a madden bowl title like let's say you win the madden bowl now the prize or at least this year the prize is going to be a ring is a ring the same as a belt john beast won the most feared challenge he got a belt um and then john beast also won the madden 22 ultimate uh kickoff i believe and he got a belt there as well are those championships or titles are those the equivalent to a Madden Bowl ring? Uh, question of the day, let me know in the comments. And I want to talk about film study here as we're kind of kicking off and uh, getting into this. When I look at film study, there's a couple of key questions that we're asking. But as you study film, I think it's one of the most important things that I can do, what you can do, we can do to become better Madden players. Because as you study film, you learn what not only the best players in the world are doing, but you want to try to ask the question, why are they doing what they are doing. Okay. That is a very important question. It's a very critical question. And it's a question that if you're willing to ask it and critically think about the answer, you're often able to kind of figure it out. Now let's talk real quick about playbooks. Both of these guys, I'm pretty sure it's a mirror match. I'm pretty sure um, that they are both in the chiefs defensive playbook, primarily due to the fact of running uh, dollar and having six one in their playbook as well. And then also on offense, uh, they are both in the Colts playbook. Okay. So kind of similar, uh, there's a reason why in these in these games, pretty much what you're seeing across the board, everyone is pretty much in either the Colts offense or the Jets offense, and then everyone is either in the Chiefs defense. Um, there's a there's one guy that we actually are going to study his film, because actually I think he had the best defense at the tournament so far, and that was Justin. He was in the Jets playbook, I believe, on defense and offense, and the reason for that was so that he could get access to the nickel wide formation, which is a really underrated defense. Let's go ahead and get into this right off the bat. John B's coming out first and 10. So he has the ball on the right hash mark. Um, kind of important. Most of these players, and, and I would recommend it as well. Uh, the game plays differently if you're on a hash mark. Most of the time, you're going to be on a hash mark. If you're in the middle of field, the zones are a little bit harder to uh, manipulate. And they just, honestly, um, it's just different. And it doesn't play like, like, like it kind of should to be on, or not necessarily should, but like it normally does because most of the time in a game, you're going to be on a hash mark. Okay. Wesley coming out here in dollar. One of the big things that I want to talk about, we've done the, vi we've done videos. We've got a full dollar ebook that explains all this stuff in depth. Um, we got a full Colts ebook, full Jets ebook, all that stuff's available on our Patreon page for just 10 bucks. You can learn everything that I know about Madden and all of my offensive and defensive ebooks. What I want to talk about here just real quick is this is um, this is going to kind of set the stage for what you're going to see. Now, Wesley is coming off a super big win against Dez. We'll have a breakdown on that video as well or a film room on that as well. But I thought this was just such a good game. I feel like you have to break this down first. So uh, a couple things. So first and foremost, John Beast comes out in bunch and he audibles to bunch uh, strong nasty. What this audible does is it makes it harder for Wesley to back this guy off. So he's got to back this guy off first. That's not a huge deal, but just understand if you're running the free safety zone blitz, what we're looking for is this guy's going to blitz. This guy's going to go here, here, and then this guy's going to kind of basically blitz the A gap. This is the best blitz in the game. It is the, it is, it's not even close, literally not even close. Um, and the cool part about this blitz is even pro players struggle to beat it, which is why um, whenever there's a blitz in the game, I think it's good for the game because you actually have to work to be able to pick up the blitz and be able to beat it. And so it creates a little bit of an element of defense. Now, uh, that being said, John Beast is going to do a really good job, job of picking it up. And for those of you guys that want to know how to pick up those dollar blitz, uh, just hang on just a second. But the, the big thing here that he has to watch out for, in my opinion, is this little seam streak to Calvin Johnson. I think this is one of the best routes because if you're blitzing this guy and this guy's in a third and this guy's in a flat, there's all this space here to be attacked. So um, that's what we've got first off here. And... Let's see what the route combo is, and we'll talk about kind of some of the main route combos. And here's the pass protection. For those of you guys that want to know how to block the dollar defense, if you're facing this and you want to send five out, what you probably want to do is double-team the right defensive end or double-team the defensive tackle. That is the primary pass 
protection that we have seen throughout the Madden Bowl from all the best players in the world. And I did want to say this real quick, just as a little bit of a disclaimer. One of the reasons we're doing these film rooms, one of the reasons that I wanted to, to study this stuff, I wasn't going to do film rooms this year, but I actually just, I love doing it and it makes me a better player. And I think it makes everybody a better player. But what I wanted to talk about just real quick, you have to understand a lot of people will complain like the meta is the meta and um, they complain about the meta. They want something to be different. You have to understand the, the meta is the meta for a reason. There is a meta in everything in life. And these are literally the best players in the world every single year. They have tested everything in this game and they've come back to the table and say, dollar is the clear cut number one defense. And uh, basically bunch, bunch offset, bunch nasty, bunch strong offset. Those are the main meta offenses this year. So you have to kind of like be a, not necessarily okay with that, but like you have to appreciate that for what it is. They are the most effective uh, plays and, and concepts we have available. Okay, let's talk about it. All right. So let's get into actually some routes. So uh, John Beast is going to go for a bomb first play. I actually want to break this route combo down. So um, real quick. So what John Beast is anticipating is he's anticipating this guy going into a third, this guy going into a middle third, and then this guy going into a quarter. This guy could be on a couple different things. Normally he's either on a hook curl coming down or he's on a uh, flat, right? A double flat to try to take away double corners. So what John Beast is trying to basically do here is when you run the wide trail play out of this formation, you could put this guy on a flat, drag the slot receiver, you can block your running back to pick up pressure, and then basically you're trying to hit this post over the top. So as you'll see this play run through, you'll see he actually has it uh, over the top there, but it would have been a, a tight throw. So that was kind of what he was looking for and just kind of tested to see what, what are the main adjustments that Wesley is doing defensively. Now notice that Wesley's backing off both of his slot corners. I actually think that's a really good adjustment. Um, it makes the blit that makes the four man blitz come in better. I will say when you back off both of your slot corners, in my opinion, the one challenge to that is you don't actually have like a, a significant threat of a five man pressure. I mean, you can blitz this guy from depth, but in my experience, you really only need to back off this guy. And so what, what I've been going to is more of a only backing off the right side corner, and then blitzing the left side corner. Now, Wesley has labbed this probably a lot more than I have and played against better players than I have. So he might know something here um, in terms of backing off these slot corners. I did want to talk about how he's actually able to do that. Um, so basically what he does... Actually, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go. Let that go. We So essentially he's backing off both these slot corners. I think what he might be doing is actually globally backing off the, the coverage. But I think, because I think the safeties actually stay where they are, but I could be wrong on that. So double corner here, one of the best plays in Madden. This is at a curl flat and a uh, nice little read there to the to the right-hand side. Now, ability-wise, um, pretty much everyone in this tournament is rocking CJ Stroud. At least everybody that played yesterday, we'll see what happens today. I do think that William Perry is still a really, really good option. And the reason why is just because his release is better than CJ Stroud's. Um, but anyway, this is one of the new best concepts in Madden. You basically, okay, this is another thing I wanted to just quickly hit um, as we are watching this through. But if you think about this, um, and, and I talk about this a lot in terms of developing route combinations and, and understanding how to pass the ball. Basically, what we have here is we have a streak, okay? We have a little drag that's going to become a flat. We have a crosser that's going to come in this area. And then we have kind of a backside in route. So if we let this run, I just want you to see where these routes end up right here. This is really the concept. So what we have is we have a pull route or a peak route. We have a high route or our primary route that we want to hit, which is this. We have an alternate receiver, which is this, and it's attacking this space on the field. And then we have an outlet receiver. So as you can see, John Beast's user is choosing to go guard this crossing route. So... Probably should dump it down to the tight end because we do have a defender in this space. You see he's able to pick up the four-man pressure, but look at the coverage. So this is actually a really, really important point because they can't cover all of the space in the field. So as you can see here, and, and I, I've talked about this before, but this, this little section where this guy's at is known as the short flat. Where this is running is known as kind of the intermediate flat. It's from about 10 to 30 yards. And then the deep sideline on the left side, okay? You have the same thing over here to the right. So if you were to run streak, corner, flat, it's the same thing over here. And then in the middle of the field, there's kind of like probably about six sections uh, and then the deep middle. And so you have kind of these little pockets in the middle of the field as well. So 
anyway, let's just check out the, the route combo. But just wanted to hit on that. Um, on every single pass play that you watch, he actually hits the crossfire, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and or I'm sorry, I think I, I think I said that was Wesley. Wesley is the Falcons beast as the uh, Pats. Now, this is an interesting uh, play call, and I'm not sure why. Um, one of the things you'll see here. So, okay, okay, really important. Really, really important. So, I, so he just attacked over here to the left side, okay? Now, he audibles. In my opinion, from, from my perspective, the main reason people audible in Madden, this is just my opinion, is a couple reasons. Uh, the, the biggest one is to try to mess up adjustments or uh, basically basically kind of just catch you in a bad defense. In my opinion, that's what I see a lot, okay? Now, there is uh, value to doing this. So if you think about it, he had bunch to the right, and then he now has trips to the right, right? Uh, and I'm not sure exactly how he did that. He must have came out and bunch left and then flipped. But anyways, the point here is, look what we have as far as route combo. We have this uh, little streak here that's going to come up the middle, but then it's also going to clear out all the zones, all the deep zones. We have that intermediate flat pattern to the right sideline, underneath flat pattern to the right sideline. So what's he trying to do? He just attacked to the left side of the field. Now we're attacking to the right side of the field. Again, we have a peak route, a primary receiver, an alternate receiver, and then he's probably thinking these couple routes right here would just be some outlet receivers, tight ends, probably a blitz beater, and then the posts, again, something going over the middle of the field to kind of hold that user in the middle so that he can throw over here, okay? So just kind of interesting that this is what he goes to. As you can see, takes his little quick read here. And, um, and that's probably just a simple, like, I'm just going to peek at that. If that's open, I'm going to take it. But really, my concept is over there on the right side. So he audibles back to this. And now, if you take a look at this, what is he doing? Same basic thing. P pull route, flat, intermediate. He hits the C route that time. And so what's this force Wesley to do? Well, Wesley has to set up defense for both sides of the field. He has to set up defense to the left side of the field. He has to set up defense to the right side of the field. And he has to do this all in a very quick pace. As you can notice, like John is moving quickly. He's audibling quickly. And so that makes it very, very difficult for Wesley to be able to get his defense set so that he can actually um, get, you know, even have a shot at defending this. So as long as John makes good reads... He's putting good route combos on the field. And as long as John makes the appropriate reads, he is essentially just attacking space. John is not thinking, well, is Wesley in cover two? Is he in cover three? Is he in cover four? That's not what he's thinking at all. Simple, simply put, John is thinking, I just attacked, prop, in my opinion, I just attacked to the left. Now I'm going to attack to the right. And I'm going to go to a different formation, make it hard for him to adjust. And then I'm going to read my route combo and I'm going to look at my peak route. I'm going to look at my primary receiver. I'm going to look at my alternate receiver. And then I'm going to look at my outlet receiver. That, to me, is essentially what I see going on here. Now, uh, the red zone this year is so honestly kind of random. But for those of you that are in Colts, uh, this is worth talking about. So just understand here, uh, again, I don't want to spend too much time on the red zone because it truly is like it's, it's just hard to score down here. Um, but I just want to give you something. So um, this is why I know they're in Chiefs because he's in 6-1. But anyways, uh, and they probably said it. So John Beast comes out. He's got a running back here. He's got three tight ends, so he can go to goal line. I'm not sure exactly what the purpose of goal line is this year. I don't feel like goal line's that good. I guess if you want to run power O or something, sure. But this wing tight out of Colts um, is kind of the new main way people are trying to score in the red zone. And essentially, we're just trying to run stretch either to the left or to the right. And we're just trying to kind of pop, pop through this lane here to the right. Or if we run left, we're trying to either cut it back or cut it up. So it's basically just wide zone. Um, is, is kind of the idea. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that's first, that's drive. Number one, Wesley, $475,675. That's pretty incredible. Um, he always finds a way to make Madden ball. I, I was, I don't know if they said that down here. I know they talked about in the broadcast, but I think it's like his fourth or fifth, uh, consecutive Madden ball. I know for sure it's his third straight. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. Okay. So John Beast is in six, one. Most people have completely left six, one. John Beast is still in it. If you ask me why I'm honestly not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I will say six, one is a very, is a defense. What's, what's cool about six, one, why it is good. We have a full ebook on this on the Patreon. It's just an uncomfortable defense to play. It's just an uncomfortable defense to play, okay? Um, and the, the disengages are good. The coverage is, is okay. 
and just an uncomfortable. Now, Wesley gets this little red pass. This is um, something that I think David T was really the first comp player talking about this, but and John B said it when he scored the touchdown, but it's this idea of blue passing or perfect accuracy. So the biggest point I want to make with that is, in my opinion, you should be on near 2020 placement and accuracy for your freeform settings. And when you throw this, you're trying to time the meter, almost like a 2K shot meter. As you see, there's a blue pass. You're trying to ta basically time the, the throwing meter like you would if you were playing NBA 2K, for example. Now, uh, th that's the biggest thing. Wesley scores, honestly, it's honestly kind of, to a fair degree, like random. Um, he gets a really uh, – he, he actually gets kind of lucky on that inaccurate that it actually goes to the receiver. Here, John is running – I'm not sure exactly. I mean, we've got flats, uh, clouds out here, and I just think that he thought maybe the cl maybe he thought the cloud was going to get back a little bit more depth. Not able to. He takes the he takes the safety over the top. So this throw is able to be thrown in the back corner of the end zone. So that's pretty much it. We're going to get more into Wesley's offense as the game goes on. That first drive, I feel like, was not really a good like uh, a good perspective, good sample size on what Wesley was really trying to do on offense. We'll get into more of that uh, probably in the subsequent drives here to come. But yeah, so, okay, so John Beast now, as you can see, what's he doing every single time? Double teaming. He's not IDing anybody, I'm pretty sure. He's just double teaming. So here he's going to double post. I want to talk about this adjustment here to the left side um, that Wesley does. And I'm not sure if he's actually doing this adjustment or if it just played very well. Okay, so this is a cover three bomb that John Beast is going for. Again, what is the base defense that Wesley's basing out of? He's basing out of free safety zone blitz. Free safety zone blitz is a cover three base shell. So what you have is you have this guy going in a third, this guy going in a third, this guy going in a third. These guys could be in quarters, but normally they're just in thirds. And then we've got some combination of either a flat and a hook curl, a flat and a purple, um, a cloud flat and a vert hook. Some combination with these guys. Typically, this guy's on a on a, a hard flat, especially if you're sending the four. Now, the biggest thing here is what he does to this defender over here on the solo side. And I've talked about this before. If you are playing double post, if you are playing uh, primarily, like if you're playing Colts, if you're playing bunch in general, but really specifically, if you're playing Colts bunch, you have to understand that they have the threat of this of this post. So this is the number one play that people are going to run. They're going to run double post. So, okay, a couple adjustments that he probably made, and uh, we'll get into uh, this side in a minute. But the main one is this defender on a deep half. If you put this defender on a curl flat zone because they're to this hash mark, the short side of the field, okay, this curl flat defender has a pretty good chance to play the C route, especially if he's backed off. This defender on a deep half will make it look like he's going to play the, the cover, like basically look like he's kind of playing in the cover three. And then if you watch, he'll actually bail back. So it's a way that, see here, so he'll kind of see that and then he bails back to that. That's a big, big deal. Now, uh, I just wanted to cover this. This is another thing. If you're playing somebody that runs a lot of double post, uh, what Wesley does is if this guy's in an if this guy is in a third, he will pinch into the numbers a little bit. It's because, and I've talked about this before, I want to talk about it again. The Madden in Madden routes and zones are based off of a grid system based off of where the ball is at on the field. Okay. That is why being on a hash mark is so important. That is why this cover three bomb works best when this guy is coming from the wide side of the field to the short side of the field because the third is going to always basically play uh, just slightly outside of the numbers. A quarter is going to play way more outside. So the, the reason this is significant is to the wide side of the field, I'm pretty sure this is an outside quarter because if this is an outside third, he normally will kind of pull back into this fade. Because he's an outside quarter, then what's going to happen is when this defender wheels up and beats that uh like hard flat, the quarter will now take the wheel route. It's one of the most important adjustments when defending double post. So you see, you see how he breaks down on the ball. It should have been a knockout. He ends up making a great catch. The reason I don't think it was a knockout, it, I'm not 100% sure of what Wesley's abilities are, but I'm, I don't know that this is a mid zone. This is uh, Darius Slay, and he, I don't think he gets a good stack for a mid zone. So you want to have mid zone. If that was mid zone, then that would be a KO there. So you see, you see the half here? See how he's running right back to the double post? That is one of the most 
like high level adjustments that do, that accomplishes a lot of things. It stops the double post post. It stops the verticals crosser. Um, it stops a lot of stuff. Now, what does it not stop? It does not stop C routes. So we'll see what John does. The main purpose of this purple is to try to stop that C route over there on the short side. So you've got a half and then a, 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 a curl flat right here. So combo, some of these combos, as I look at this game, and, and you have to remember, like, these are comp players are always going to put really good route combos on the field. But what I want to propose is sometimes I as I watch these games, it can feel a little random as you, as you watch them play. And it's because what is happening is as the defense is adjusting in a comp game, a lot of times the offense is adjusting. Now, somebody that doesn't really do that is, um, especially on offense, the way they run their offense, Somebody that doesn't really do that a lot from my, from just my study of their gameplay is Fancy. Uh, he pretty much runs his system, and um, and it works at a pretty high level. And he's a, one of the best offensive players in the world. So, again, you see John now flip and go to trips and attack the left side. So the cool part about this is you're in bunch left. Now we're in trips right, and so it flips everything. It's almost like flipping the bunch because now I can attack all of these, all this space over here a lot faster he goes to this corner route. I wanted to break this corner route down. Uh, this is actually kind of important. So what was Wesley doing a lot to the short side of the field? Wesley was putting this guy in a deep half. A lot, right? Pretty pretty regularly. So, for again, this audible here is designed that now he has to do it. He has to make an adjustment here. But again, he has to do all kinds of adjustments. Like he probably wants to man this guy up on triangle. Like, there, you know, he probably wants to do some different adjustments. Now, what Wesley's also doing as we look at this is he's man aligning he's man aligning against trips a lot of people like that against trips personally i'm starting to kind of go away from that i um in the in the middle of the year i liked it but what i'm finding is this right here is way too open so essentially and you see he's even trying to use it to a degree but when they go to trips you have all of this stuff over here to the right side to worry about but the beauty of this crosser is if you have this little deep crosser from the verticals play, he will actually pull this guy if he's on a deep half or an outside third. So you, and especially if this tight end's on an, a short corner route. So you see he's on that short corner. He goes to the crosser. This is open. And then John just makes an incredible stick play, and he's able to get in the end zone. And this is where I did want to just, as, as we're kind of watching John um, chat, chirp at Wesley a little bit here, I did want to talk just briefly about my thoughts on muting the players I, I feel like that's kind of a bad move. I understand the purpose of them doing that. The purpose of them uh, muting the players is so that they don't like have any profanities on there. They're kind of, you know, EA Sports is is a E-rated video game, so they're they're probably trying to keep it where it's like um, you know good for everyone type thing, or that way they could they, they don't take a ratings boost. I don't know why they do that per se, but it just seems like that's what they're trying to do. So essentially they're just trying to cut out cuss words on the live stream. Part of the, uh, but the problem is, or the challenge with that is part of the joy of Madden is the motion. And that goes into a game and watching these players get really emotional and they, and they start talking to each other. That's an element of the game. In fact, if you can watch, uh, like things like, uh, the quarterback documentary on Netflix, things like that, where they're dropping F-bombs, not all the time, but in certain situations, when the emotion's high, they might say something. And uh, that's that's kind of like a thing in any competitive sport. So um, I'm not sure my opinion on that. I feel like it does definitely, I understand we want to make it like PG or whatever so kids could watch this. I get that. Um, I just feel like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I wish you could, I wish, as for me, I wish that you could hear them talk back and forth at each other uh, more. I wish they wouldn't have muted them out. Maybe what I would propose is during the live broadcast, let them talk to each other. But then in the edit, like let's say you're posting this on YouTube, then bleep it out or something um, or, or mute them in that way. I think that that really does help. But um, I don't know. That's my opinion. What's your opinion on that? I understand the whole like we want to make it you know, good for the kids and stuff, but Kids are going to hear cuss words at the end of the day, um, and there's there's no way to prevent that. Kids are, I mean, you know, I, I have a friend who's got a nine year old, and he's you know cussing on the or he hears cuss words on the on the playground all the time. So and you know, it's I, I feel like you can't really regulate that, 
And I think any attempt to, what it does is it takes away from the authenticity and raw emotion of the game, which is one of the things that Madden has over a lot of other esports. So that was my two cents. Right here, double corner from Wesley. He's able to hit this. So I want to talk about why this combo is so good, um, especially against 6-1. So 6-1 in general, what most people are going to try to do is they're going to, this guy's going to be in a cloud flat. This guy's going to be in a purple. This is kind of the basic 6-1, double Mabel, and then a half or a half. Now, there might be some man-ups, which you'll see John do here. But as a general rule, you're basically playing cover two Mabel a lot, okay? The problem with playing cover two Mabel a lot is that it really cannot defend this, especially if you run this to the wide side of the field, because the tight end will pull the half every single time. So they, this guy has to be in a third or a cloud to choose one of these uh, one of these routes. So what you'll see here is Wesley's just basically, and this is another thing that I think is so important to understand about reading the defense you want to make it as simple as possible on yourself so as wesley's looking at this defense and thinking about what are the possible adjustments well essentially his this concept primarily is going to key on this guy it doesn't matter what this guy is in; he's not going to cover anything so he's primarily keying in here if this defender is in a third then he's going to work this short corner uh which i think i think is to this guy um if this defender is in a cloud then he's going to look to try to throw this. And if both options are covered somehow, maybe some cross manning or something, he's going to work the backside. So he's going to peek here. This is his primary receiver. Uh, well, I mean, technically he's going to peek here. This is probably his primary receiver. And this is his alternate receiver. And that answer depends on what this guy does. So that's kind of how he's reading the play, at least what the way I would, I would teach it. So you see here exactly what I said. Hard flat, hard flat, cloud flat, cloud flat. Automatically, Wesley's eyes are probably locked in on R1. And if R1, you do see there's some kind of man up or something here to R1. If R1 gets this step to the outside, it doesn't matter the fact that John Beast is using it because he's three steps behind. John Beast might as well just jump down to this just in case Wesley made a mental mistake. But as you see... R1's wide open, and he's able to hit this over the top. So that's hope that combo is really good against 6-1. It's good against a lot of defenses, but it's really good against 6-1 because 6-1, it just doesn't have the ability to defend that concept, which is why you see here, this is one of Wesley's red zone uh, plays, and he actually had it, but he didn't want to test the user and clock here. That's... um. So basically, if you run a running back wheel route to the wide side of the field, it will pull outside thirds and outside quarters. So I know it's another little cool little trick that you can use to be able to flood to the wide side. Um, so you see here, going to Durham, we've got nice little check down read. So again, he's going to, on that Durham route combo, he's going to peak that fade. Probably instantly is going to work that tight end or that running back. So he might go back to it here. This actually is one of his other plays. Uh, the, he, you see him go to this a lot in the red zone. Uh, this is something that, that you might like steal, uh, so to speak. It's a really good combo. The tight end crosser and the running back ghost route, really, really good in the red zone. And then uh, with the backside, kind of doing whatever you want with the other three receivers. Uh, we, see him, we see him do a lot of different things with them. So pretty good little freestyle red zone dot. But the primary concept is, is the uh, the crosser, the tight end crosser and the running back ghost route. So, okay, so I want to break down uh, the run plays or the run calls here. So what is John Beast trying to accomplish? What John Beast is trying to accomplish, got to remember, this is one of the most important parts of Madden is the clock management aspect of the game, okay? And really the game management. Um, John Beast gets the ball first, right? So there's a minute 33 left, and, and essentially – because John Beast got the ball first, that means Wesley's going to get the ball at half. So what John Beast is trying to do is he's trying to make sure that Wesley doesn't get another opportunity to score. 
even if that means John Beast gets three, he wants to get seven, but even if that means he gets three, at least it still puts him in an advantageous situation where he's able to stay in control of the game, right? You always want to try to be in a position of strength and control of the score. If you are playing with a lead, it's a lot better because where does the pressure, if John Beast, even, even if John Beast gets three and he gets, when Wesley gets balled half, where does the pressure go to? It's on Wesley because John Beast has the lead. And then when Wesley scores, John Beast is going to have a possession to con to regain the lead. So again, the, the, the pressure is almost always on the person that is losing the game. So that's why, um, you know, you're seeing John Beast do that. That's also why you're seeing Wesley call timeouts. Wesley, um, I will say, I actually think the decisions to call timeouts are okay. Um, but I feel like the, the first time out, I feel like it was fine. The second time out, I don't love the second time out. I guess it is a third down situation. So he's thinking if he can get him on incompletion and John actually just kind of gets lucky here. Let's talk about the, uh, the defensive adjustment or the, the defensive adjustments on that play. I'm not, sh and this is where I say like, sometimes watching this again, you're always asking like, why are they doing certain things? I really believe the live stage, the live environment, the fact that these players know a ton about the game, more they've forgotten more information than we'll probably ever know. I think some of that plays a factor into they're trying to attack certain spots and they have hot route master. And I just don't love the route combo here. I guess I kind of understand what he's trying to do, but if, if we back this up, so he's in mesh spot, right? And I'm pretty sure mesh flat spot with the corner. Okay, so we have a streak here. So I like the streak. I like the corner. Uh, but then, like, if you look at this, like, this drag, I mean, it's an okay combo. It's, it's just simple slant post, but, or it's a shallow cross. But again, and I guess what he's thinking is if the user comes underneath, this is going to be open in this pocket. I just feel like the spacing on this play is not the greatest. And you see why uh, in terms of how he throws it. So what Wesley goes to is he goes to a double flat. So he's got a third here. He's anticipating double corner. So he's got a third here, I'm pretty sure, or some kind of deep zone, a flat, a cloud. Now, uh, over here on the right, he's got a hard flat, a third, a third, and he's sending four. So the hard flat, he's going to pass this drag off to the hard flat. All he has to use her is this, the uh, post route. That's all he has to use her with his guy. Where, where is he going? <laughs> now, okay. Where he could be going is to play this playmaker drag. Like if, if let's say, let's let's just assume the best here. So, because these are the best players in the world. John Bees is going to playmaker this drag. And obviously in the, in the middle of like, this is within five seconds. So they're doing this really quickly. So Wesley's probably thought, okay, I know that I have a zone here. So I'm going to pass him off to my zone defender who's right here. Okay. This is great defense. And then he's able to come down here and either lurk the running, the quarterback run or any kind of like playmaker route. John Beast throws this. And I mean, if you watch at this, at this point right here, <laughs> you know, this is, this is an interception. I mean, it, it just watching it's, it's at least a KO, um, but it, it's, it, it looks like an interception. And as you can see, he's able to come down with it. It's actually a big catch for him because if he, if he doesn't catch that, now you're in a fourth down situation where if Wesley gets a stop there, that would be a huge thing for the for the who's in control of the game. John B's come back. You see there's double post. Now, I think that was a third over there that time. And notice that that short corner from double post does a really good job of manipulating the zone. And you have to put a curl flat. If you don't put a curl flat over there, it's almost always open. Even if you do put a curl flat there, sometimes it gets open. Um, this combo, I actually don't hate it. It was out of uh, bench pivot, I think. But what you see down here in the red zone, what are the main concepts? A flat zig post hitch. So flat, flat, somebody on a zig, somebody on a post, somebody on a hitch, like a ghost or an in route. So you see here, there's the ghost route, there's the post route. And I talked about this in a tip video I did about this on the channel. And we talked about this in the ebook, John Beast gets seven. You want to smart route those posts on the red zone, in my opinion, um, because it makes them run. They won't run into the back of the end zone as bad if they if you do that. So now, uh, in this situation, 13 seconds, pretty much nothing too crazy here. Now, uh, in the most feared uh, game that John played against Abram, I believe, he gave up seven before half out of this defense. So 
You should see John play very conservative. Um, Bemba don't break. Even if he gives up three, like you don't want to give up three here because Wesley gets bought half, but you're okay. But again, this is the thing. Look at the timeouts. Wesley doesn't have any timeouts. Now, he might not have even gotten the ball back if he had a timeout, but John just keeps everything in the middle of the field and goes into halftime. All right? Now, where this game really gets interesting is this is the second half, and, and, and there's just so much going on in this game. Double corner with the tight end now. Uh, and so you see, and this is important. This is a very important read in the double corner play. Okay, so what again, what is the defense we're facing? We're facing 6-1. So the cool part about double corner, there's so many things about this, but now what we're going to do is we're going to change up who's on the corner route because last time Wesley ran this, uh, John Beast was cross manning uh, different things to try to, to try to contain this play. So this is a great adjustment from Wesley. This is something we can all take away, especially now that we're all getting uh, either hot rod master or tight. We can literally get tight end apprentice for free with Travis Kelsey. There's ways to get the apprentice abilities. Basically, here's what it is. We have a corner route to our to our slot, and then um, you can sometimes you can run this guy in the corner, or you can run this guy in the corner. So now they have to they have to cross man, like who can they cross man to stop this? Because if they cross man circle, well, what if I just run this guy on the short corner? So uh, again, I think that's a really good adjustment by Wesley. And then also on the left side, again, we have to anticipate. Okay, what are they doing defensively? Well, this guy's in a flat. This guy's in a cloud. You know, that's that's pretty much your standard 6-1. So if this defender goes out, look look at the pocket that is – the user goes right, this goes out, that's open. That's a really good read from Wesley and honestly one that I want to start to incorporate a little bit more in my game because the double corner routes do take a long time to develop. So it's good to have that little just hot read. You just want to peek. You know, I, I, basically what I would do is I'd peek this, have a hot read here, and then really my concept's over here. So – this is a weird play call to me by Wesley. I wasn't sure what he was trying to accomplish by this, but he started going to this max protect play. Um, it's not a bad route combo at all. I just was kind of like, why are you going to this, right? Now, what uh, what I will say is, let's see this again. So you see here, I mean, that's just, there's just, it's, I just don't know why he was going to that um, for sure. I think what he was trying to accomplish was if there was a cloud flat on the left side, if he, if John was still dropping that guy in a 30, then Wesley could hit that crosser over the top of it. But I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to be Wesley to know that. Again, double corner, but guess what? Now we're going to the tight end. So watch how this is defended. Cloud flat, so R1's the read, but John Beast uses it. We've got our backside check down. So again, this is so important, guys. This is, uh, when you're watching the best players in the world play, you got to learn why they are able to make reads better than you. And normally it's because they have a systematic approach to their read. So what if I'm Wesley right here, I'm peeking the circle receiver. I see the user go right. I'm immediately off of that to the right. And now I'm looking left. I see there's a defender there. Okay, so both of my quick reads are dead. I can't throw the ball hot. So now I'm going to work my concept and my concept is uh, my deep corner route and my short corner. So I'm going to let the play develop a little bit. So now I'm looking over here and I see there's a cloud. So guess what's el Guess what else is dead? The short corner is dead. So now the, the only thing is I can either hit this guy or I got to come back here. John Beast user is all the way up here taking this away. And so this makes it very simple for me. I just check it down to my outlet receiver. Again, a couple peak routes, primary receiver, alternate receiver, outlet receiver. You basically have three reads on every play. And then these little initial quick routes that you might be able to hit if they're blitzing or something uh, is something that I need to get a little better at in terms of how I, how I read the defense. Those quick reads are helpful when playing the best players in the world because it makes them have to be more disciplined with their coverage. Okay. Okay, so right here, double posts. Um, honestly, these are just kind of bad. I don't know if they're bad reads, but they're just not, um, not they're, you know, a couple plays here where John's able to kind of just contain Wesley and uh, really stop what he was doing. So now we're going, guess what we're going back to? Some kind of double, this, was, this is Wesley's favorite red zone play, or at least in this space of the field. So what's he looking for here, okay? Really important. Again, we're on the left hash mark. I, I cannot overstate that. We're on the left hash mark. We're looking to the wide side of the field. We've got a couple of options. So let's say this guy is in a cloud flat, right? And let's say this guy's in a half. If that happens, this streak clears out that half, and then the corner 
has a chance to get over the top of a deep cloud flat defender. Now, if they go flat here, cloud here, half here, then we can work this backside in or we can work the wheel. Now, let's say they run a different coverage. Let's say they run third, third uh, flat, right? If they run a cover three, then what we're able to do is we're able to trust that our wheel route, when he comes up field, that third is gonna have to take the wheel and it's gonna leave this corner open in the end zone. So we'll kind of flash through and kind of talk about this. Okay, so right off rip, we already see that this is dead. I can't throw this, right? It appears John Beast is in a basic cover four here because this guy's back. This guy is running backwards. He's not, he's, um, this defender is probably a cloud, but this guy's definitely not, as you can see. Okay. So we have essentially third, third half, and then we have flat, 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 and then user in the middle of the field. Okay. So at this point in the play, what I want is I want to throw a circle. So it just matters. It's a matter of if he uses it or not, is basically what we see here. So look at John B's user. He's behind. If he throws this perfectly, this ball will be open right here. He gets a blue pass. And it was, he doesn't get a great animation, I will say. He doesn't get a great animation. John's fired up. But he, I mean, honestly, it was open. It, it really was. Um, it probably should have been KO'd. But obviously, you know, the pass that John caught, and that's what Wesley, I mean, is flat out telling him. He's like, you know, you caught something that was a lot more covered than that. So... So anyway, uh, but that was honestly like, I mean, it's not a bad, I think on, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe just the pass lead, like kind of made that a little muddier than it should have been. It was open, uh, in my opinion. One thing that is interesting to notice, John Beast runs a lot of backed off thirds or like where they're just kind of mid pointing, uh, which is kind of interesting that they're actually working as good as they are. So this is another setup of dagger. I love this combo. This com coming one of my favorite plays, um, because it does a really good job against the way people defend some of your other plays in this formation, as I think I totally did not mean to do that. But anyway, he goes to dagger. All right. So 454, 28, 28. This is a huge drive. Okay. So Wesley scores out of half or did I missed something. I was, let me, let me back this up. All right. So that was the play. And then we are, Let's let's uh let's go back here. Sorry about that, guys. I bumped a button. Okay, so he goes to the he goes to the trail and then he takes it to the fourth. I'm pretty sure. All right. Okay, so what are we doing? Dagger again. This is one of the best route combos. Now let's talk about again. Why is it good? Why is it good? Okay, you have a seam streak threat to the left. That is really really good because most plays and formations like this to the right side. Where are they going? We're going right. A lot of plays go right. Like the verticals play goes right. Right. So what we're able to do is we're able to now go with a, uh, a clear out or peak route, a crosser coming over the drag coming under. And then the beauty is this route coming right in this little Y cross. This is basically Y cross from the air raid. Boom, boom. Y cross wide open there. He holds on that and he goes there. And that's the reason I don't love the combo. Uh, and I actually think the slot apprentice post might be better if you're going to run it. I'm not sure though. Um, I'm just, I don't know. That's why I don't love the combo, especially from this alignment, which is another thing I want to quickly point out. We didn't touch on this yet. So he goes to dagger. Now, uh, dagger has this, um, let me, uh, let me go back. Let me go back to this. This is actually really important to understand. Okay. So, so he goes, okay. So he goes to dagger. So dagger has this, this streak, but it's kind of like a fade. But look at look at where he's at on the look at where the ball's at on the field. The ball's in the middle of the field. So because this guy is in a compressed alignment in Bunch Strong Nasty, whereas Bunch Strong upset this would this guy would be out here. But in Nasty, he's in here. There's advantages and disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is the fact that if he runs this streak, the third doesn't have to care once this middle third is able to midpoint it. So the middle third's coming over. He's going to end up about right here. And then he'll be able to take this, which is what allows this guy to play a little bit more uh, sideline-y. So you see, he takes that. This guy rolls back on the sideline. That's why hash marks matter. And that is why uh, routes, you, you have to understand why your routes are getting bagged or not. It was open quote unquote, but it was also not now here. Um, John Beast goes to this setup. I'm not sure. 
I think what he's basically trying to do is trying to hit him with this bomb. We'll take a look at how this plays out. Kind of, yeah. I mean, just... Jumbies, honestly, should have probably just called, like, the RPO or something, gotten the ball in a hash. Uh, maybe a little undisciplined here in this situation, uh, just because you, you don't want to be in the middle of the field because it's just, it's very, it's just very muddy when you're in the middle of the field with your routes and how they work against zone coverages. So here he gets screamed at. Now, I want to see, I think Wesley sent five. Did he send five here? This is important if he did. So, again, um, what's John B's pass protection? To double team this guy. Here, Wesley sends five, okay? So, please look at this. This pass, how do you counter this pass protection? You send five, okay? That's important because if you're running this defense, at times, you need to be sending five, all right? You need to be sending five. Uh, so, he gets third, 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 purple, or cloud, and then a man up here, I'm pretty sure. And then this guy's probably in, in a purple or cloud as well. And pretty good defense all around. Now, the other purpose of John Beast double teaming that defensive end is if he ever is in trouble, he can roll to the right with uh, CJ Stroud, as you just saw him do. Fourth and six, biggest play of the game up until this point. John Beast is going to go to double post. He's going to flip double post. And he's going to look for this. Now, it's not a bad i it's not a bad co combo but i feel like there's no way this tight end gets open you see i mean he's not gonna let that open so you have to throw double post it's the right read but mid zone ko or deep end zone ko whatever was able to 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 ko it so um yeah just just kind of surprising i just didn't feel like that was the best play call in that situation i would have called verticals um, or something that's a little bit more like there's more underneath options because I just felt like he didn't have anything underneath and, and there was just nothing he used. I mean, there's just, I just didn't feel like that was the greatest play call because it both routes kind of attacked the same spot. And then all he had to do was just take the cross across and then got a KO. Now the post was open quote unquote, but it, it was open, but it wasn't open. Now, I love this route combo against 6-1. I, I love this concept. Uh, this is such a good play. Uh, another thing we didn't touch on yet that they did touch on in the broadcast is the alignment of 6-1. If the defensive linemen are spread or they're if they don't pinch their defensive line, most of the time against a good 6-1 player, they're probably not or they're probably blitzing you. And when you blitz at 6-1, you want to you want to send it. So you're either going to send you're going to you're going to probably send this guy for sure and you might send this guy. So the point being what this is a great play call by Wesley. He goes to this little setup. This is the Durham setup, but he just makes it, creates it out of bunch offset. But what's going to happen is we're reading this defender. If this defender sits or goes back, we're throwing this. If he goes down, then we're looking probably here to, uh, to our other, other routes over there. So look at this defender. He goes back. That's open. Easy read. And we're moving. Having those quick little snap boom. Those are so valuable. And again, with, when you start to become a really good Madden player, I think one of the things that happens is you start to move through these progressions. Like peak, you, you, start, to, you start to move through them. So you're like, I'm going to peak here, and then I'm going to go here, and then I'm working this combo, right? So you see here. And he had the, the running back wide open, I think. So like here, let me, let, me, let me explain. So, okay, so look at the combo. This is really important. This guy's backed off. The, the fact that this guy's backed off means I don't really, this is not a good, there's not much going to happen here, okay, normally, because there's two backed off defenders on that left side. Now, on the, or on the right side. On the left side here, what are we doing? Same kind of thing. We're really keen here. Um, we're keying the, really these two defenders, but, but we're looking out here. If this is open, we're going to throw it. If it's not open, if, there, if this space of the field is not open, where is the next easiest place to work? This place right here. And if you time this up with your routes, it actually works really well because you can look here quick, then here quick, and then you can work your, your, um, your primary, your alternate, and then your outlet, right? So that's the idea here. So uh, let's talk about, I just want to show this in, in motion how this works. Okay, so right here, this is dead. I can't throw this. Look at his user. His, so where do I look next? I'm in this space. This space is open. If I'm Wesley, I need to be hitting this, right? And again, the reason I'm going into such detail on this is understand the best players in the world misreads. 
The best players in the world miss reads, okay? Uh, what you want to not do is if you miss a read, number one, you don't want to force stuff. So you want to be, there, there's an element of patience that comes with this. And then number two, you just want to get better. You just want to get better constantly. One of the things I was so impressed with Wesley actually in the post-game interview was he said, um, tomorrow my goal is just to get a little better, to watch, learn, see. You know, these guys all watch each other's film. They all learn from each other and it's what makes them the best players in the world. So you can learn from your failures and you can learn from your successes. So running back is open, but he's not looking there. He's probably looking here. So once he sees this is dead, because he see here, he's running into cover. He's running into cover, but this guy's in a cloud. So if I'm Wesley, the only throw, the only throw is this. This is the only option that I can throw um, because of where the user is at at this point. Now, again, I'm slowing the game down. That's important. Obviously, this is happening faster than I'm, than I'm showing you here, but you see the running back's open, but now at this point, I can't really throw this because he's running himself into coverage, running himself into coverage, so I just got to eat the play. And that throwaway is a great decision by Wesley because it's really the only decision. It's really the only decision. I'm just as guilty as anybody. Um, I've got a gameplay coming up where you'll see where I just, um, sometimes I just don't make the only play, right? I make stupid plays. Yeah, so you see here, boom, that quarter route should be open, and it was open, but this now uh let's talk about this rollout decision let me see why he did that so this is what makes 6-1 good in my opinion it's this random disengage this right here is what makes 6-1 good it just randomly happens there's not a great way to pick it up okay not consistently so he has a touchdown here but he has to roll out pressure and he can't throw it but has a touchdown right so he's still feeling probably pretty good offensively now let's look at this next play, third and 10, got to have a play. What's he go back to the wheel the corner and he hits that. I don't feel like that was a great, let's, 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 let's watch that one back. Cause now we're kind of getting into some of the critical plays. Okay. So this is a got to have it down. He goes to this play. We talked about it before from about the 30 yard line and in this is one of his favorite plays. Okay. Because he's, what's he trying to do? If this guy's in a cloud, he can't cover this corner because right, it's so deep. He's got the streak to clear out the half. So if you get a cloud and a half, this is going to kill it. But let's say you get a third, a third, and something over here, then the running back is going to clear out the third, and you can throw the corner kind of over in this little left side pocket. Now, the other routes on the play is we have a little baby in route here. So what does that do? Well, it gives us a high-low in the middle that the user has to lurk, and then it also means that late he'll be a flat, okay? So let's look at the adjustments from John Beast. What do we get? We get a third. We get a third. We get a half. We get a, a some little flat here, a vert hook. I'm not sure. Was, where did the safety go? Where did he go? Let's see this here. Oh, he goes to the middle of the field, huh? Okay, so he goes to the middle of the field. I don't know what this is. This might be a yellow zone or a quarter. So he goes third, third, cloud, uh, curl flat, vert hook, cl uh, curl flat. So basically what we have is he the right read is square. 100%. And you'll see it actually. Yeah, yeah, right here. So you see when he's turning, this is open. Uh, he is getting pressured. And he throws this, it's just hard to say this is open. I mean, there's three defenders in the space you're trying to attack. One of them has mid zone KO. Um, if, you, if you, yeah, we can't quite see that, that corner would have come open late. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you get lucky. I don't know. Um, and in this game, you it was a great rack. I think he rack caught it. Uh, which was probably smart on his part, and he did get a good rat catch animation and ended up getting it done. Now he's going to the red zone. What's his favorite play in the red zone? Ghost route, crosser, ghost route here, crosser here, wide open, playmakers this. He did have that. I don't know why he didn't throw that. May have been the pressure, um, but watch what he's going to go back to. Second and seven. Look at, look at the play. Now we go to this. We got a little hitch here. It's the same concept, hitch or ghost route on the numbers, paired with a tight end crosser, and then whatever on the backside to kind of hold the user. He's got the crosser again, but he gets pressured again. So third and seven. So he's literally going to run the same passing concept three consecutive times, three consecutive times. 
and I want you to see this. Hitch, crosser, now we have a corner. Where's the user? Here, and he, that's an amazing playmaker right there. Amazing playmaker. John Beast finally covers the crosser with himself, but it leaves the whole middle of the field open for that playmaker hitch. And that's why those hitches and ghost routes are so valuable um, in those situations. All right, got to have a drive from John Beast. Now, I did want to quickly cover uh, what John is thinking here. The way the game is going, you really can't give the ball back to Wesley um, with the time. If you score... Uh, typically most Madden drives, if you're going faster, you're probably going to score. Uh, if you're playing a good player, you're probably going to score within about two minutes, maybe three minutes. So what John is trying to make sure of is that he does not give the ball back to Wesley. At the same time, he has to score seven points because he's losing. So the other kind of decision that needs to be made is, and, and John historically has gone for it, if you score, let's say you score and there's 10 seconds left. Do you go for two? Do you go for two or do you kick the extra point? Those are some of the decisions that he's about to have to make. But first and foremost, you got to score and you got to do so in a way that doesn't allow Wesley to have the ball back. So he goes to this double corner. I've not seen anyone run this version of double corner where they wrote motion this guy out. I'm not sure why uh, he did that other than maybe to make it look like the double post play to maybe uh, disguise what he was trying to accomplish. Not sure. He ends up going out of bounds, which he does not want. He didn't want that to happen, um, which it might have also been why he motioned out. But ends up running the ball because again, he's got to get the clock. He's got to. This is this is a hundred percent about the clock here, and he's got to. He's he's got to get it down. Uh, he's got to he's got to get this clock out of the way. So that's the purpose of the runs on first and second down. And then third down, he probably is going to pass here because, again, he needs to give himself two chances uh, to get this first down. So the the choice in terms of play is another little factor, and you'll see right here what I'm talking about. So he goes to this play smash return. Um, now, normally the first read is here. So we're going to peak this, and then we're going to hit drag, post, crosser. So we're going to peak. Our primary receiver is typically going to be the post. Our alternate receiver is going to be the drag, and our Outlet receiver is going to be the, the little uh, smash return uh, or the return route. Okay, so he's going to set up his pass trick. So I want you to see what happens. Wesley sends everybody. He sends one, two, three, four, five, six players at him. And he has a hard flat, a hard flat, a hook curl, a hook curl. So this is um, a style of defense that Madden players will play situationally. And it's because what we're trying to do, Wes, what Wesley's trying to do because of the situation, is he's trying to get John to have to throw this fade to score so that Wesley can get the ball back and go win the game with a field goal. That's the thought process for him. John does an incredible job here. Uh, this is a, a masterful job, obviously probably anticipating that this could be a potential thing that Wesley might do. He goes to this combo and I will say it's, it's kind of surprising to me that he's able to hit this with success because Wesley has a hard flat, a hard flat, a hook curl, a hook curl, and he's shaded underneath. He may have even protected the sticks. So they're all coming down. So look at this read. This is incredible because you got to do this while you're getting screamed at, right? So all John Beast is doing, he's not, he, this is dead to him. He's not looking at this. He's trying to figure out, can I hit this? or this. So the read is right here. He's looking right at this guy. What does he do? And I'm actually, this, this needs to be a hook curl. This, this guy has to be on a hook curl. I thought they had both of them on them. This guy's on a half or something. This, this is a mistake. It has to be a hook curl. The reason it has to be a hook curl is because if this is a hook curl, then now all he has to use her is this right here. If this is a hook curl shaded down, there's very good chance that all he has to use her is that. There's no purpose of this deep half. It's a wasted adjustment for what Wesley was trying to do this situation, but it does exactly what John Beast needs it to do. Now here, it's kind of a, <laughs> uh, I mean, in real time, it's like these are these are tight windows, but he ends up throwing this. This would have been wide open. He is getting blitzed, so he's got to get the ball out, but he's able to hit that. And I just feel like, Right idea, poor execution on Wesley's part because I just don't understand the purpose of having a half. Maybe he just didn't get the adjustment off. But if you're putting everybody in hard flats and stuff, you got to put you. One of the rules, fundamental rules against bunch is you've got to stop this little box right here. You've got to stop this little box. So, um, okay. So now Wesley's calling timeouts. 
the main purpose from Wesley's side to call timeouts here is to try to give himself a chance to get the ball back. And it really doesn't matter when he calls them, honestly. And really what Wesley, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's kind of just interesting. They both know what each other are trying to do. And so you're kind of seeing a little bit more of a chess match of like, I'm going to do this, you're going to do this, I'm going to do this, you're going to do this. Um, and they're thinking about three to four steps ahead of the actual down that they're on. So that, that to me is where Madden becomes chess, not checkers and how you, even just how you, what style of defense do you play in that situation? How you approach the run. Now he says right here, you'll hear him. I think he says it, but he'll say, um, you know, you're trying to lose the game and that's because he's running with his quarterback. Now, John Beast might know something we don't. But generally, if you run with your quarterback, it can't. They can fumble even if you don't. Even if you're on conservative. So now at this point, 16 seconds, John Beast is just trying to score seven. Okay, he's done the good job of the clock. He's able to hit this, and now we are in the exact situation that I said. What do you do? Do you go for two, or do you um, try to go to overtime? Basically, that's the decision John Beast has to make. In my opinion, and I know hindsight's 2020. He uh, says he ends up not, so he ends up not going for two. But I will say he references the reason or the purpose for not going for two. His game against Gabagol, which was the Madden 24 Ultimate Wild Card, or, or not Ultimate Wild Card, Ultimate Kickoff Tournament. He played Gabagol, same, literally same, pretty much same exact situation. He ended up going for two and not getting it. Um, he does have three timeouts, too. Uh, I don't know that that plays as big of a factor, but he does have three timeouts. But anyway, and he's literally saying that. He's saying, like, you remember the game against Gabagol, right? And they're all, you know, talking, whatever. But the thing is, what have you seen from John B's defense that tells you he can get a stop? The only chance he has at getting a stop, and this is why I fundamentally don't really like 6-1, even though it is, it is the second best defense in Madden 24, 100%. The problem with 6-1 is, in general, you are, tr you, are, you are relying on randomness to get you your stop. You're relying on your random disengage to come in at the right time. They throw in an accurate, you get a pick. That's basically what he's trying to do. And you see here, Wesley's just going to take this to the, to the overtime period. Okay? And I think that is ultimately why I think Jombie should have probably gone for two. Because he truly could not stop Wesley. He truly couldn't stop him. Um, and, and the only time he even got close to stopping Wesley on any of his drives was when he got a random disengage. So I just feel like you – and then he goes to this play, and this is the play of the game. It's honestly a good play call, and it's really unfortunate. But what you'll see is you get this A-gap. Now, again, what does Wesley do? This is important. He sends five. So Wesley's going to gas him up. He's going to play third, 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 probably purple, purple. I don't know for sure. Yeah, so we got a purple. I think we got a purple here, purple purple on both slots, okay? So this is just a send five. But the route combo John B's calls, middle of the field, middle of the field again. I don't know that that plays a big role, but it does play a role. And again, like, like why don't we throw this? Why don't we throw this quick? Why don't we throw this hot? Um, I think the... I just, I'm surprised he doesn't do that. As fast as John Beast plays, I'm just surprised. So he's looking here. Now, what's going to be open on this play? Okay. We call dagger. We got drag, crosser, and then we got this little Y cross, little backside kind of in route. The way he's using this, if he goes to R1, X is going to be wide open. Okay. Now, he is rolling out of the pocket away from pressure. At this point, you see X is wide open. So we're going to throw X. But for some reason, this route, I don't know what happens, but it just dumbs out. Now, you can't quite see it yet, but now you can. This is a red throw, which basically means when you're rolling out of the pocket this year, if you don't get the perfect accuracy, which is the blue pass, I think, or it's like a light green pass that says perfect accuracy, then you will throw an intercept. The ball will be just completely poorly thrown, okay, uh, normally. This goes back to the beginning of the game. Wesley got one of these. His guy caught it for a 48-yard touchdown. John Beast gets one of these, and Wesley picks it off. It also didn't help him that his receiver literally stopped in the middle of the field. And ultimately, this is why John Beast loses the game. 
And this is a really important lesson about Madden in general. Sometimes you just lose. And and honestly, it doesn't mean you're a bad player. It doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It just means you lost, right? So John B's played pretty good. Wesley played pretty good. And it kind of came down to a little bit of a fluky play at the end. And sometimes that happens when you're playing the best of the best, but you still keep playing. There were mistakes made by both sides. But ultimately, Wesley comes away with the W. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this film room. Let me know. I want to do more of these. If you guys like this kind of content, I'd love to do more of these. We're going to be doing a lot more in-depth version of these in our Patreon. We're actually going to uh, do some really, really cool stuff with that. So thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope it was helpful. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.